Hello and welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Diane Dayton. Today we're going to look at passion and in fact we're going to define passion. And to do that we have Les Owen. Hi Les. Hi Diane. You are an Army veteran. You're also a musician and an award-winning filmmaker and also my friend. Yes. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. You have done some amazing things with film, but you have such an interesting history on how you got to where you are. So let's go back to the beginning. So talk about the Army and what happened there. Well, I was in the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone, in Washington, D.C. Um, and along the way, um, I played saxophone in the band. Um, I discovered that um, a friend of mine had uh, was pursuing script writing, film writing. And uh, I thought that was, I was so shocked and, and surprised to hear that. And I believe my comment to him was, if I had it to do all over again, I'd be a filmmaker. Hmm. And um, I was relatively young at the time. So I thought, you know, it's not too late to start. And I, uh, I went ahead and bought some equipment and realized that the, the compelling reason for doing this is I always loved films. I love storytelling. I love the, um, the process of filmmaking and I mean from acting and directing to editing and all of those things. So they always fascinated me and uh, I wanted to pursue that. Yeah. And that's where a huge passion for you lies with the storytelling and with the music. So what happened the next progression with getting into the film with the Army? Well, w when I started my own company, I was just looking for stories to tell. Yes. You know, people that needed that kind of work or something that interested me. And along the way again, uh, while I was in the band, uh, we were getting ready to perform a concert and one of my uh, bosses said, you know, it'd be great to have a, a, a PowerPoint to go with a piece of music. We want to engage the audience that way, visually right. as well. Were, mm -hmm. We'll have a screen and we'll, I said, you know, I think you want a video. I think you want something that the band can play along with that's moving, that has some life. I think that's gonna be a lot more interesting to the audience. Well, they liked the idea. We worked together, I put something together, and then they kind of became addicted <laughs> to that idea. So right. I, was, I found myself producing more and more uh, media for the band. And uh, within a couple of years, they decided they needed a full-time videographer. Um, and they created the slot and I got the job. So okay. I was able to change careers and never leave the building, right. which was great. Yeah, it's such an interesting journey when you look at your life with this and what you're doing. And I think the first time we met was when we were talking about the film Victory Remembered. Right. I think around what, 2015? Well, it, that started in uh, 2013. Okay. Um, they were coming up on the 75th anniversary of um, the first special service force, also known as the Black Devils, were going to go to Italy to retrace their steps um, and uh, their liberation of Rome. And they were taking some of the veterans with them. So they knew that they were, they were closing that window of opportunity. And through some associations of mine, I was able to join them and go on that trip with them and produce um, a documentary uh, entitled Victory Remembered, Legacy of the Black Devils, which also ended with them receiving the Congressional Gold Medal at the Capitol building. So wow. it, was, it was a great story. Yeah, it truly was. And I remember when I first watched that, which was the first film of yours mm. that I had actually viewed, I was mesmerized. And I told you then, and I'll tell you again, it's the subtleties and the nuances that you have between the dissolves and with the pictures, the way the music comes in. There's such an emotional connection that you make with the audience in your storytelling. And that's what I think is really powerful. Oh, thank you so much. I yeah. appreciate that. That's very powerful. So you have won a, a number of awards too, and your films have been playing nationally and internationally as well. The one that you and I worked on most recently, a while back, Diversity in the Long Gray Line. Tell us how that came about. Well, uh, while I was in the Army Band, uh, we had the opportunity to travel to China. Uh, there was um, a program called um, Cooperation through Partnership and Cooperation Through Music between the United States military and the Chinese military. Mm. They had brought the Chinese National Band to Washington, D.C. They played at uh, the Kennedy Center and at the U.N., along with our band. They actually sat together and played. 
Um, so it was meant to be, um, intended to be, and I think successful, um, uh, an opportunity to demonstrate how the two militaries could work together. It's, it's you know, we're back and forth politically, militarily all the time. Uh, but at that moment, they were trying to promote some sort of cooperation. Mm -hmm. The following year, uh, it was decided that our band would go to China. So um, we, uh, we made that trip happen. And one of the experts who I relied on heavily uh, for information was a gentleman named Woody Goldberg, who was Alexander Haig's right-hand man hmm. for all of his career and an expert on China and whatnot. So we became very good friends and are still to this day. Um, he is involved in the Jewish community and was had some conversations with uh, the um, West Point Jewish, Jewish Chapel Fund. They were looking for someone to make a film about the 1,000th Jewish cadet to graduate from West Point. Technically, they don't have all of the records necessary to really make that determination, but based on the records that they did have, uh, they determined that that particular year was the year that whoever it was was going to be the 1,000th Jewish cadet to graduate. Right. So they were soliciting for filmmakers for that. And I think a lot of the contacts were in New York. But Woody stepped up and said, I got this guy. <laughs> and we had worked closely together and... and um, he sent them some of the stuff that I had done. So I was, I communicated with them, I put in a bid and, and got that contract. Yeah. So I had the honor of working uh, at West Point with, with their publics, public affairs people, as well as the uh, Jewish Chapel Fund and made some great friends producing that. So yeah, yeah I love that. And then of course, you, my dear friend, <laughs> agreed to do the voiceover for me. And I just knew that that was the perfect mm. touch. That's exactly what it needed. And you did a wonderful job. Thank you. It was a wonderful collaboration yeah. of all the people. And it's cool with the Telly Award as well. Yes, and yes, yes. I was very the, excited that. about that. Yeah, exactly. Me too. You are passionate about compelling stories. How do you define compelling stories? Mm. Well, I guess... It's always going to be an emotional response. It's what touches you. Uh, I think um, this series came about uh, because of my interest in telling stories, but also firsthand, personally, I knew so many people that had interesting um, passions in their life, things that mm -hmm. had driven their lives uh, that made them unique, that made them sort of living as full a life as they could. Right. Despite whatever challenges were involved with that, it was so meaningful to them that they knew that that's who they were through mm -hmm. that activity. Um, and I was making a promotional video for a friend of mine, a percussionist. And along the way, it was meant for, for, it meant for him to use to kind of reach out to the community and let them know about him. Mm -hmm. But in the telling of that, I was able to find out that it was a, a much greater drive in his life to be a positive influence on mm. young musicians and young people. A lot of them in underserved neighborhoods in the Washington DC area, Maryland, Virginia. Donnie Johns is his name. Um, and I was able to go to rehearsals and shoot the rehearsals and saw the relationship. And in the course of the interview, it was such a, it was a, just a deeper story than just promoting him. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided to go ahead and, and make a short film um, about him and had some of his students in there talking about the influence that he had on their lives and uh, the training that he was providing for them. And right. I just realized that this is what, you know, this, these are the sort of stories that inspire me mm -hmm. personally. Yeah. I mean, if I'm watching something on YouTube or I talk to somebody and I hear something like this, I get emotional. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And um, I figure I'm not alone. Mm -mm. You know, these are the sort of things that people need to hear. You know, the people in their own lives or people that they can relate to. Um, explaining what's driving them, why it's important, and that it's, it, it, tends to be about, it tends to be about reaching out to others or communicating or connecting to humanity in some way. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I just, that's a very important uh, aspect to life yeah. to me. And the fact that I have the skills mm -hmm. and the equipment right. and the time 
to tell these stories is really what has allowed this to happen. Mm -hmm. I've um, um, reached out to a whole bunch of friends and I, pretty much everyone that I reached out to has agreed to help me out with this. So it's very gratifying. That must be a sign too, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's it endless, is. I think. Yeah. I think you have a way of getting to the heart of a story and sharing it. If we want to find more of what you do and the people who are watching, where do we go? Well, for the longest time, I would just post things on YouTube uh, because it's the most popular place for people to go. Um, but now I've started using Vimeo more often. Mm -hmm. It looks more professional. I think it's got a nicer presentation and it doesn't have all of the other distractions that YouTube has. <laughs> so I think it's a, just a cleaner presentation. Um, and I have, I have lots of stories. The, the diversity film is there and the, the Black Devils, but this series is also on Vimeo as well. I am uh, thankful, grateful that people will be able to find it on your station. Absolutely. So that's really <laughs> exciting. Everybody involved knows about that and they're very excited mm -hmm. and appreciative of that. That's so good. I will also probably enter some of these in film festivals. Mm -hmm. um, I have some options there. It was suggested by a colleague that maybe I combine some into one film. But that was back when I was thinking they might be 12 minutes long or right. so. Well, uh, The Pianist is 28 minutes long. Mm -hmm. I, I'd be hard pressed to cut anything from that because it's just the people involved tell such heartfelt stories and their recollections yeah. and the subject, Melissa Marion, mm -hmm. is an amazing person. Yes. I just can't see changing it. So I'll, I'll have to figure out some things along the way, I think. Well, I would agree that that in its entirety is the best way of presenting that because I've watched that and talk about a lot of heart yeah. in that one too. Oh my gosh. So what we're gonna do is take a brief pause and we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more about defining passion in this wonderful new series that Les Owen came up with. Stay with us. LCTV 66 is your community channel and your donations keep us on the air and help to produce more local programs. Send your tax-deductible donation of 500, 100 or more to the address on the screen. Or think of it this way, for the price of a couple of movie tickets, you can help support your community channel. Send what you can and be a part of all that is good about Lancaster County. Thank you for your tax-deductible donation to LCTV 66. Welcome back to Behind the Lines, and we are with award-winning filmmaker Les Owen, and we're talking about his brand new series, Defining Passion, and this is so exciting to me because there are so many amazing stories around us, and you have started to gather so many of them. What is your process in doing that? Well, I think um, just generally speaking, uh, going through life in conversations, I. I would rather listen to people mm. than talk about myself. Well, my family might have an issue with that one, but <laughs> generally speaking, I, um, it's just more interesting to me. And it's not that I'm looking for things. I'm not always looking for stories, although not too far in the back of my mind, that little engine is always aware and always on. And um, in the course of a conversation with someone that I, I meet, for example, Donnie Johns, the percussionist, we met at a party and I could see how much what he did meant to him. So I got him to tell me more about it. And I could just, I got that feeling. I just, mm. it was, the feeling was coming on. I said, this is really wonderful. I love this guy already. And he's, I want to help him tell his story if I can. So that tends to be a, a thing that's going on in my life all the time. I'm listening to people casually and if I hear something I go well that's really unique or that's really interesting tell me more about it mm -hmm. um, for the series uh, I just once that happened with Donnie and also with the, the the bike shop owner which was kind of an accidental film uh, and I can tell you a little bit about that but after those two projects I realized this is something I really want to do mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying just talking to people and finding out what it is they're excited about or what's you know, what's passionate to them or what, what drives them. And then I started to think about, well, what does that mean to people? How not everybody mm -hmm. finds what's passionate to them and the ones that do, how do they come to that point in their life? How do they realize that sort of thing? So in the process of doing this, I've come to at least my, my take on the subject is that um, people, um, 
they respond to some calling of mm -hmm. some sort. There's something that happens in their life and they respond to that. And it's different for everybody. It, it tends to, in the process of figuring out what it is they want to do, they're defining themselves. Mm. So the passion isn't defining them, they're defining themselves. And another part of that is it really represents a, um, a, a, something that's universal in humanity. Even though, again, it's different for everybody, uh, you, whether you're a doctor or a bike repairman or whatever, if it's the thing that you love uh, that gets you up in the morning, that guides you through the day, that you get excited about when you put your hands to work, then that seems to be generally common, mm -hmm. I think, in people. So the fact that these are all different is interesting. The fact that it's all common makes it relatable. So I think that's, hopefully that's what audiences that watch this will take away from it. Absolutely. And as I look at this, we can talk about some of these additional subjects because this is so diverse, which I also think is the beauty of it all. Agreed. But this seems like this can be a project that's unending. It's limitless. It truly is. Yeah. It truly is. Uh, on here, we've got a race car driver. Yes. Again, these are people in my sphere of influence. These are people that I know in my life. So uh, Dan and I went to elementary school together. Okay. And then over the years, I found out that he, uh, I didn't know what was going on in his life, but found out that he was racing cars. Mm -hmm. So uh, there, and I was following his on Facebook, um, following some of the, the events, and I thought, this guy, it, it takes a lot. It's a big investment financially mm -hmm. and with your time and energy to yeah. make this happen. So clearly he's passionate about this. Right. And um, all of the other people that I, who, who I've mentioned on that list are people that I know that have done something unique. You know, and that's not a nine to five. It's what controls or, or drives their entire lives. So. Yeah. We've got an antique fire truck owner. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Sure do. Uh, a guy in my neighborhood, I was out riding my bike one day. It was a beautiful day. And I'm driving through. It's a suburban neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I look in a driveway and there's an antique <laughs> fire truck sitting. I mean, you know, not your big hook and ladder, but right, an antique right, fire right. truck. And I actually, and the guy was like pulling weeds or something in his yard. And I turned around and went back and I had to, I said, excuse me, is that your fire truck in your driveway? <laughs> he goes, yeah, let me show you all, let me show it to you. Let me tell you all about it. He was so excited about this fire truck, which, I mean, it was beautiful. So he starts telling me everything about it. and. Uh, I spent some time with him. I said, okay, here's someone that I really want to sit down and interview and get the full story. He's also a volunteer fireman. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I haven't sat him down yet, although I have gotten some video of him. Uh -huh. um, he's, he drives, like at Christmas, he'll drive through the neighborhood sounding the siren and the kids are, you know, whatever, sitting on it with the lights and whatnot. So oh, that's great. he sees it as something that he can have fun with sharing with the community, but the... Uh, you know, getting it repaired and fixing it all up was something that was very meaningful to him. I think for you too, following a natural curiosity that you have. You're saying I do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That opens up so many of these doors Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Like uh, a doctor without borders is also one. Another good friend of mine from uh, high school uh, who went to West Point mm -hmm. and uh, became a doctor in the military and afterwards had a career uh, in medicine and joined Doctors Without Borders. So he's been all over the world, um, really sort of, you know, talk about giving back. Right. You know, he's taken his skills and saved people's lives and helped people, you know, relieve pain and suffering all around the world, so. I'm also finding PTSD service dog patient going to be an interesting one as yes. well. Yes, yeah. Uh, Victor Hurtado is a, a friend of mine who I met mm -hmm. while I was working at, um, Arlington Cemetery. I w was the video producer there for a, a short while. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had some connections with Army Television at the Pentagon from when I was in the Army Band. And I needed to do a project that required a um, Hispanic translation. Huh. So I called Army Television. They said, we've got somebody here who's bilingual and he can help you out. We met and became really fast friends because we had a lot of uh, common friends and had common experiences. But I noticed he had his dog with him the whole mm -hmm. time. And I got to learn a little bit about his needs and why the dog was helpful and special in his life. Uh, so again, when, these, when this 
idea started to develop, and I'm thinking of people who have something interesting in their life that I want to know more about, mm -hmm. really, honestly, it's really about me finding these things out. Mm. Like, it's, it's my curiosity. I, the, the, to be able to sit down with them and get them to tell me, just, I get to sit there and be the audience. Yeah. And they're telling me everything about this most meaningful thing in their life. Mm -hmm. And it's a really strong human connection when, when somebody feels like they've got somebody that's listening to them, yeah. that's interested in what's important to them, with the understanding that I'm going to be sharing this with people. Mm -hmm. So um, the same thing happened with Victor, and I became more and more interested in his relationship with Holly. And then when we got together and shot this, it's just it's such a wonderful, loving relationship. And I, I, I learned a lot. So I'm very, again, very appreciative. I think it's very brave for some of these people, mm -hmm. uh, Victor especially, to, to share that, you know, there, there, he has challenges in his life that um, this that PTSD dog, Holly, has you know, given him hope, Yeah, is, is how he puts yeah. it. So that's pretty yeah. important. Clearly, you are following your passion. Oh, yeah. I have no doubt about that. Right. And I think the goal with this series that you're working on now, too, is bringing us all together. Mm. And you were talking about that common humanity. Right. Explain just a little bit more about what you really see as the goal with this. Um, originally, I had an idea, and this I haven't been able to, to get far on this original plan, which is to have a... Um, um, to create a, um, what's it called, a uh, non-profit, oh, pardon okay. me, labs there, uh, that was, it's called um, Building Us, mm. and the idea is to show stories, I was just going to find stories, I, I, would, I knew that I would be producing some, but find stories about people who simply gave, mm. whether that was working in a soup kitchen, whether it was cleaning something, uh, some sort of service or something that they do and they're opening the doors for people, something that they're mindful of that they, they do just to serve others, mm -hmm. okay? And it's, to me, that act of, of giving back, even in little bits, uh, it doesn't have to be a big thing, it can be. Someone wants to do that, but it's how you live your life. If you're giving back to people, that builds humanity, that builds connections. And uh, that's really where I think the germ of all of this came was, okay. rather than spending time getting other people, other people's stories, I would start producing them myself. And hopefully this will lead back to that and invite other filmmakers yeah. and artists and people that have, well, this is, this is something that I like to share that I consider giving back. Yeah. So that's how that came about. It has taken on a life of its own. Hasn't yes, it, it has. It has. Yes, I'm and, very grateful for it. And I think that's a really good thing. Can we find you on social media? Not with this project yet. Um, I have but we to, can find you with other projects. Yes, there's a Victory Remembered Facebook page, um, and that's all about that. Uh, there is a uh, Treehouse Dreams Films Facebook page, okay. which I will be posting more and more on. All right. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm afraid that has been in the back seat while I sort of jumped into actually creating something. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. I'm so glad that you took time today to come and share this next series with us because I look forward to airing these as well. And you can also find Victory Remembered and also Diversity in the Long Gray Line. We still air on LCTV 66. Good films. Thanks so much for all you do to make a positive difference in the world, Les. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today, too. I'm Diane Dayton with Behind the Lines, reminding you to look behind the lines. You might be surprised what you find. Now check this out. I restore a lot of old bikes. I have a passion, again, passion for bikes. I hate to see a bike get thrown out in the dump. You can really spend an entire lifetime learning how to master the field of percussion. Working with young people in the realm of percussion has been a passion of mine since I was in high school. When somebody asks me about Holly, I, you know, I very sincerely say, they say, well, what does she do? I said, she saves my life every single day. Every single day she saves my life, yeah. What are you passionate about? You're passionate about the things that you love, the things that you love doing. I go to the piano and it's been 
my main passion all my life. We say things so the future generation, my kids, grandkids, and their grandkids can see this. My doctor, my psychologist at the VA, had said, listen, you really need to have a service dog 24-7. For many students, music is what makes them come to school every day. It's what drives them. It's what gives them passion. Understanding that it's important for us to work together and achieve goals. And when we do that, we can achieve the goals that are far greater than what we can do on our own. So PTSD dogs have to be able to tell that you're about to go into a, a crisis or that you're about to go into a trigger moment. I didn't realize what thriving looked like. I had no idea. So it's something that I'm starting to discover now and that Holly helps me with. True passion for anything doesn't come from an undisciplined state of being. Melissa taught me discipline. And it's through that that the door to the passion opened. It gives you a sense of purpose and of living. I, I think some people were born to lead uh, great armies, but I think I was born to change tires. <laughs> <laughs>